So we just drag the image of our character in our product here. And when our automation has finished running, we now have a stunning motorized position shot showing our product in character. And that was all created by this AI agent system that uses Gemini Tree, Nano Banana Pro, and Kling, and a new technique called Contact Sheet Prompting that you should know if you want to upskill in AI creation. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams. I'm now operating our AI creative agency and RoboNuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn for anyone with AI training and certification that most people join for, but most members stay because of the strong community we have built. All right, so I'll teach you how to create these motorized precision style camera shots all using AI, which fun fact, years ago, the first instance of this shot being used in popular media is through this Kendrick Lamar music video for Humble. And this video was released eight years ago. And the only way you can achieve this effect back then is to literally have a camera like this that's worth tens of thousands of dollars that shoots the video for you in a motorized, precise way. But now it's possible to be done with AI thanks to this technique that I'll teach you called contact sheet prompting, which a lot of it was inspired by Reflect Willie over at X, who shared how he used this technique for a fashion style shoot that you can see here. I'll also link to his website below where he published a really good guide if you're planning to do this manually. But as mentioned in this lesson, I'll show you how you can automate this process with the help of an AI agent. And the reason why it's important to learn how to automate these things is because in tomorrow's world where you can have literal AI agents assist you with prompting and calling on these AI models, which usually you can get for cheaper if you do it this way, it just allows you to scale better instead of being bogged down by having to write our long prompts manually every time. And this system, we built it in N8N, which if you're completely new, N8N is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com. But the great thing about N8N is if you're watching this and if you're part of the community, you can just download this template here in our resource page and you can import that template into N8N that will build the automation for you from scratch and where we also publish this quick setup guide if in case you haven't worked with N8N before to help you set it up even if you are a complete beginner. But if in case you do prefer to create with AI manually, don't worry because a lot of the principles and lessons that we'll go over today is useful and can be applied no matter if you're doing it automatically or manually. Because by the end of this video, not only will you learn about the skill of contact sheet prompting, I'll also show you how you can use N8N and Airtable and how they're used in practice when it comes to AI creation. And finally, I'll show you one of the easiest ways to stitch clips together using Bezier or Easy Ease curves. Let's dive in. Okay, so there's basically four steps to this process. And the very first one is for us to create our core image. Some people call this the base image or the foundation image all mean the same thing. But basically what you want is to have an image image that will capture the look and feel of the final video that you are after. And most especially including the product that you want to advertise and also the character that you want included in the whole scene. And there's multiple ways by which you can do this. But in our group, what we like to use is this tool called Airtable, which you can see is similar to Google Sheets. But the big difference with this one is that you can load media, images, videos, music into the individual cells. We also find this more organized versus having to generate manually through Higgs field or FreePick, which are great options if you're doing it manually. But do note that with those platforms, since they need to spend on marketing a lot. It's also quite common that they have marked up prices for AI models. What's also cool about Airtable is that they have a really generous free tier and you can upload your reference images here by dragging and dropping. And what's great is if you have a website and the image is already online, you can just drag it and drop it into these individual cells in order to load the elements you need for your core image. So what are those elements? Well, this varies per use case, but at least for this example, you can see we have an image of our character, which just to make it more challenging, we gave it a 2D image just to see how our AI models will handle that. We gave it an image of the apparel that we want our character to wear. So if the brand that you're advertising is fashion, then this is going to be a really powerful tool for you. And then the third image, we have our handheld product, which we have uploaded here. And now the reason why I have a second row here is because I also wanted to show how this system would work if you don't necessarily want to define a character or what they're wearing. But instead, you can just put in images of your product and it will work just as well. And by the way, if you need this Airtable template where we also preloaded the examples that we gave in this video, 
If you're watching this and if you're part of the community, just FYI that you can duplicate this template directly from this link. So I'll go through these columns more in a bit. But for now, for us to create our core image, I'll just set this to create both of them so that when we go to our N8 and automation, which functions as the engine that will create the images and the videos and the prompts for us, we'll be able to define which particular rows we want to automate and create for this run. And just to quickly go through this build, it's quite similar to our previous systems. N8N is actually very modular, so you can adapt it to whatever use case that you want, which is great. And the reason why we're able to build this up very quickly is because we already have previous many templates for which we just adapted this specific build for today's use case. And the way it works is that for each of these rows, this creates the elements for us to get to our final video. So you can see first we'll be creating the prompts that will create the core image and then we'll be going through these steps later as we progress towards this lesson. But for now what we want to do is to create the prompts. So what I'll do is to just execute this workflow from within this button that will run that whole stream. And you can see what's happening is that we have it linked to Airtable where it just grabbed those two items which we defined here and now we fed it to Google Gemini in order to give an analysis and description of what these images contain so that we can describe it for our agent, which right now in N8N agents can only accept text, which is probably bound to improve in the future. But once it has that context, plus our custom instructions, which I'll show in a bit, it is now thinking of the prompts, which you can see when it's done, it logged that output back to Airtable, which is now available here in our core image prompts. And here you have an option to pause if you want to review and inspect these images before you run them. But honestly, mostly because it's much easier to review images than long written prompts. What we usually do is to just run the next step in order to see the images so that we can refine them further. And so to show how easy it is to do that, what I'll just do is to run this next workflow, which is going to create our images. And you can see it's just grabbing all of those elements again from Airtable. But now it has context on the prompts that we want. And so this node in particular is going to be creating our images using Nano Banana Pro. And when that's finished processing, you can see it just loaded those two items, which are the images into Airtable. And if we expand this, we now have those images, which by the way, we can just expand these rows so that we can see them better. And if we see this first one, you can see how Nano Banana Pro was able to handle our instructions successfully by placing our image, which previously was a 2D character, now wearing that kimono vest that we wanted to include, and also perfectly capturing the product, including the brand logo in there, which is quite wild, honestly. And to me, that works perfectly as a core image. So I think we can work with that. And then this other one, you can see that even if we didn't define a character, we only defined this product, it was able to create a core image on the style that we wanted as well. So that's actually step one. So with our automation, you can see how easy it is to do. But we'll take a pause there because there's several nuggets of learning that I think you can pick up from how our agent crafted these prompts that will also improve your skill as a creator in this space. And so the first question is, how did we come up with such strong image prompts that resulted to great images like these? Well, if we expand this, you can see that the prompt that our agent wrote is quite detailed. You have a direction here on the style, you have a direction on the setting, you have a direction on the angle, and also includes what type of camera is used. And that's also the same for this second prompt where if we inspect it, you can see it was able to craft a prompt specific to the Sony Alpha 7 IV, along with those other details as well. And so now if we go back to our AI agent, we can actually open this. And even though there's a lot of text here, there's basically just two elements that you should pay attention to when setting up an agent. And that is this user message, which is sort of the message that you send to ChatGPT, for example. So it is your request. And if we expand this, and let me just zoom out a bit, you can see that what we're basically doing is we want it to generate one unique prompt. And we're passing on this green text, which is a dynamic field, because in reality, we're passing on a description of the product, which you can see here is quite detailed. This one is about the Sony Alpha camera. And all of that information was created by this analyze image node. So if that is our user prompt to this agent, the reason why it was able to output quality prompts is because of our system guideline that we gave it here, which practically serve as its custom instructions. So if I open this and again zoom it out, what I basically instructed it here at the top is to output a prompt that is a variation of the master prompt below, which I'll go through in a bit. I want you to follow it exactly, but just change the hand positioning based on what makes sense for the product, because since we're generalizing this agent, it should work no matter what the product that you want to advertise is. And and also a variation on how the product is worn and where it is placed. And everything else stays the same, which is important if you want to have a consistent look across your projects. And so now all you need to do is to have a strong master prompt like this. At least for this example, this prompt is all credit to Willie's website here, whom I mentioned earlier and has done a fantastic job with this walkthrough that you can just find in the link below. What we just did for this master prompt is again, generalize it because I think for this one, he was doing it manually. And so he needed to define the apparel, the oversized jacket, as well as the glasses, which is the product in this case. But since we are automating this, you can see that what we just did is to generalize that to just say the featured apparel and product. 
captured as a full body shot. And so because of that strong system prompt, it was able to generate quality prompts like these without us having to write it. And so now all that remains to do is for us to pass this prompt into Nano Banana Pro, which if you inspect this node, you can see that it is connected to the service called WaveSpeed. And WaveSpeed is basically an AI model aggregator, but the benefit of using services like them is number one, you can see just how many models you can tap into that are not available in more commercial well-known providers like Higgsfield or Artlist or Feepik. So there's literally hundreds in here. And number two, because they actually don't invest a lot in marketing, it's very common that they can offer these models for much cheaper. And we're also not sponsored by WaveSpeed or these other AI model aggregators of the future in these lessons, by the way. But we do use them a lot, so I'm sharing it to you as well. Any case, so if you search for Nano Banana Pro here, you'll be able to find that model, where here you can see in the playground, you can also use this manually with exactly the same parameters in the same exact model. You can define the aspect ratio, resolution, and whatnot. But in order to set this up in automations like N8N, you do need some basic knowledge around APIs, which thankfully, even if this is looking a lot technical, you can actually just paste this to ChatGPT and learn this. Or we also have a lot of other previous lessons in the community that will tell you and teach you how to set this up step by step. But basically, once WaveSpeed has finished processing Nano Banana Pro, it now just logged those output into Airtable, which is now the images that we see here. Which now brings us to step two, which is creating the contact sheet itself. Now, if in case you don't know what a contact sheet is, it's basically a borrowed term from the world of photography, which dates back to the time when we had to use film a lot for photographs. But basically, for our purpose, what it is, is just another high resolution image that shows your character and product in multiple angles. And the reason why this is useful is because if you have a contact sheet, an image model like Nano Banana Pro, who is quite good at reasoning, will be able to give you a lot better consistency if it creates those individual images for you in one spread. And so to do this step, it's very simple. Here in our system, we just execute this third workflow that will now create the contact sheet for us and load it back to Airtable. And once that's finished processing, you can see our contact sheet images now ready in Airtable. And so if we inspect this, you'll see how Nano Banana Pro was not only able to keep our character consistent, but it was also able to keep her attire consistent and also keep the product consistent, which is important. And if we go to this second image, it's the same thing. We have multiple angles of the same character with a really good shot of the product here in the last one. And by the way, one of the great things about doing it this way is that with Airtable, you can just duplicate the project by doing a right click and clicking duplicate project. And if in case you're not satisfied with this contact sheet image, you can just delete this. Maybe you want to tweak the prompts a bit as well, or even have a third variation of the prompt. And what you can do is run that automation to generate the contact sheets or even the core images. If in case you want several iterations that you want to try out. And the way we got those images is through the strength of the prompt that we provided Nano Banana Pro. So if we inspect this HTTP request and just zoom in to the actual prompt that we gave it, you can see it's a pretty long prompt that it'll probably take me time to read the whole thing. But the key ask here is this part where we are requesting Nano Banana Pro with one 2 by 3 contact sheet image and where it's also defining the shot list that you want per frame. And this is big credit to Willy again, where if you just need a copy of that prompt, it's all available in his website and where he probably spent some time in order to tweak this and have it output consistently a 2 by 3 contact sheet image like this. But now that we have our contact sheet image, we're now ready to move to step 3, which is basically to get those individual images and animate them to create our final clips. So if you want to do this manually and save a few credits, Edits. What you can actually do is to just crop these images individually because with Nano Banana Pro, we set it at 4K high res anyway. But if in case you want to do it automatically as well, then this is one method that you can try. Because if you go back to our automation, you can see here we have a specific row for splitting the shots. And if we run that stream, what it's now going to do is to get that contact sheet image, it's going to extract the bottom left image, then the bottom right, the top left, and the top right. And then what it's going to do is just log them back in Airtable, which we'll see in a bit. So now when this has finished processing, which if you go to our scenes table, you can see it was able to extract these four frames coming from our contact sheet. And not only that, it also automatically loaded the ending images for us. Because in this step, what we'll be doing is to animate this as the first frame and this as the last frame for one individual clip. And then it will transition to this frame, which is the same one as this, to move to this next frame. And then so on and so forth, you can see how it flows by just looking at the pattern of the images here. And apart from that, it was also able to load the transition prompt, which we'll go through in more detail in a bit. And so if you're curious in how our automation handled that, if in case you're doing it manually, you can see it's very simple. If I open just this bottom left node here, you'll see we're still using Nano Banana Pro in wave speed. And if you look at the parameters we defined here, this specific prompt is what would give you the image of the panel that you're after, which in this case is the bottom left one. And then we just do that individually for the bottom right panel the top left panel and the top right panel. Obviously, you can expand this if you want to also capture this top center and bottom center. If in case you need a longer video, that's an option for you to get as well. 
And apart from loading the images, you can see it also loaded this transition prompt, which if we expand this, this is just a fixed prompt that is actually useful for you to bookmark because whenever you need to do a starting and ending image transition, a prompt like this where you're asking the camera to move very slowly and deliberately will help you a lot if in case you want a smoother transition between your starting and ending image frames. And so now that we have eight scenes that we need animated, the next step that we'll do is to just run this last row here, which would now create the videos for each of those eight clips and place them in this column. And so when that has finished, you can now inspect and individually preview these videos here. So we have this first one where you can see the camera is slowly and deliberately moving into this next shot. And then if we look at the second clip, that would start from this frame and then move to the next pose or scene. And because we have a good shot of our product zooming in to the detail, we also get shots like these that are quite important, especially when you're advertising. And if we take a look at this camera one, I think this also turned out well. And that's all because the starting and ending image frames are already quite consistent. And so the video model in this case was able to transition much smoother between the two. And the model that we used for these videos, you can see it's still hosted by wave speed. But within wave speed, we're specifically using the Kling 2.5 image to video model. And in case you're updated in latest AI news, there is a 2.6 model. But unfortunately, that one across providers, it doesn't have the start image and end image feature yet. You can only feed it a starting image for some reason, which is why for this use case, we chose Kling 2.5, which is actually a stellar model already. Now, you may also be curious why we didn't choose VO 3.1 for this specific example. Originally, I wanted to use VO, but I've since found that if you look at this final product, when you put the clips together, there's actually quite a noticeable jump in the frames, which if I just play this, you'll be able to catch it. There you go, which is present for VO, at least for our findings, but isn't present in Kling. So if we go to the next shot here, yeah, there you go. There is another sort of mini jump cut there, which is not really optimal for what we are trying to achieve. And this is why it's useful to try out other models, because depending on what you're after, it may be the case that Kling 2.5 or other models in that case would be useful for you as well. But perfect. Now we have our clips. How do we now combine them into the final video that we saw? And that's what we'll tackle in step four, which is combining all the videos to produce that final output. And there's actually ways to automate the stitching of these clips, mainly through FFmpeg, which we've covered several times in previous lessons. But since there's only four clips that we need to stitch together, I actually thought to show this free tool that also applies these ease curves or Bezier curves, as they are sometimes called, which is basically this effect where the clip starts slowly and then accelerates and then decelerates again. And the speed of that is basically indicated in this curve. And this tool is called Easy Peasy Ease. And this tool was also created by Willy, who is the original writer of this guide, and which I've since found he vibe coded in a single weekend. So that tells you a lot in how easy it is now to create custom applications like this to solve your own problems. But if you go to this website, all you need to do is to upload your videos. And once you have them uploaded, you just make sure that you have these ordered properly by dragging and dropping here on the left. And then when you click on finalize and stitch videos, that will now give you this simple interface where you can adjust the duration of each clip. Right now, it's defaulted to 1.5 seconds. So you can change that to something like three seconds, for example. And you can even adjust the ease curves here. So you can just explore the different options here and see how they differ. But basically what it does is to just change how fast or how slow the transition is in between these frames. And when you change those, do note that they are settings for each individual clip that you select. So in case you want to apply this setting to all the videos, you can just click on this box and click on update video. And that will reload the preview for you automatically. And once you're satisfied, you can just download your video here. And there you go. You now have a full clip that has the precision camera movement baked in. And in case you're curious about the cost, I summarize them here. These are the rates via WaveSpeed, which we featured, which another benefit is with providers like WaveSpeed, they actually don't require you to subscribe to a monthly plan. You can literally load like $5 in there and use that to fuel your creations. And also as it stands, these costs are really, really low already. Just thinking about the quality that you're able to get out of them. But if I were to guess, as newer models get released, these costs will definitely go down some more just because of how competitive it is within the AI models competing against each other right now. And so if you have the skill to create content for brands like this, and you have the knowledge to automate everything so that you can scale your work, then this is definitely going to pay dividends for you down the line as AI continues to develop further. And as mentioned, all of the resources we featured here, you can access inside the Robo Nuggets community, which if you're passionate about creating with AI and want to earn from that passion, then I encourage you to check it out. You get a lot of exclusive AI training courses here, including training certification when you complete them. You can connect with a community of 1,000 plus AI practitioners who share paid opportunities and potential partnerships. And recently, we also teamed up with 570 plus of the top AI and SaaS tools to give massive savings and free credits for our annual members, which actually already cover the cost of membership. And finally, we run prized learning events too, like this one in December with a $3,000 prize pool.
So check that out to see if that's for you just in the link down below. And also, if you found value in this video, then consider subscribing because that helps us a lot to make more educational content like this. But that is it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.